Over 2,000 years ago, Hippocrates described gout as a disease of kings, primarily because it was the wealthy who could afford the rich foods which seemed to precipitate gouty attacks. But now we can all eat like kings and acquire some diseases of royalty ourselves. Gout is caused by needle-sharp crystals of uric acid in our joints, and uric acid comes from the breakdown of purines, and purines are the breakdown product of genetic material, DNA, the foundation of all life. So there's no such thing as a purine-free diet, but foods do vary in their purine content. And it was long thought that people with gout just needed to stay away from all high purine foods, whether they're from animals like organ meats or plants like beans. Uh, but this strategy proved ineffective. Yes, all uric acid comes from the breakdown of purines, so limiting meat makes sense, but that means all kinds of meat and plant sources have now been largely exonerated. The association of gout with, more, with both alcohol intake and increased dietary purine consumption has been known since ancient times, but there were no prospective trials to back it up until just a decade ago. The Harvard Health Professionals follow-up study of about 50,000 men followed for a dozen years, and alcohol intake strongly associated increased risk of gout. In terms of food, they found increased risk of gout with higher meat and fish consumption, but not with higher consumption of purine-rich plant foods. Uh, maybe because the purines in plants are less bioavailable? Um, so though it's been suggested that gout sufferers should moderate both purine-rich animal and plant foods, the results suggest that this type of dietary restriction may be only applicable to purines of animal origin. Although it was not surprising that meat and seafood had significant associations with the incidence of gout, this lack of effect of purine-rich plant foods was new. Uh, there don't appear to be any long-term studies showing purine-rich foods, plant, plant foods increase risk, uh, though there are still some guidelines out there continuing to disseminate these outdated recommendations. Not only has the intake of purine-rich plants not been associated with high uric acid levels, but the vegetables that gout sufferers are specifically told to stay away from, mushrooms, peas, beans, lentils, cauliflower, were actually found to be protective. This may be because foods rich in fiber, folate, and vitamin C appear to protect against uric acid buildup and gout. For example, fiber has been recognized as having a potential role in binding uric acid in the gut for excretion. Lack of association between purine-rich vegetables and urate could be due to the co-packaging of these beneficial plant components, vitamin C, uh, dietary fibers, and phytochemicals, which may mediate the effect of purines on uric acid. Vegetable intake, regardless of purine content, may also be protective in terms of getting rid of uric acid via excretion. By changing the pH of our urine, we can change uric acid clearance. Eating an alkaline diet, a vegetarian diet in this case, uh, was found effective for removing uric acid from the body. Those eating the alkaline diet excreted significantly more uric acid than those eating the acidic diet. As such, uric acid levels in the blood of those eating the acid-forming diet rose within days. So one would assume uric acid levels are lower in vegetarians, and indeed those eating vegetarian long-term found to have significantly lower levels in their blood. Uh, to prove cause and effect, though, you need to do an interventional trial where you take people, change their diet, see what happens. So they took 10 guys for a study of the buildup of uric acid in the kidneys, uh, kept them on a standard Western diet for five days, and measured their relative supersaturation for uric acid. Then they tried a vegetarian diet for five days and got this. The intake of the vegetarian diet led to a 93% decline in the risk of uric acid crystallization within days. Or you could do it the other way. Take a bunch of people with gout, feed them a big meal of meat, and see if you can trigger an attack. Seven patients were put in a hospital, stabilized on a low purine diet, and then challenged with a meat-laden dinner. In response, Uric acid levels shot up, and they started getting gout attacks. Then they added alcohol, and uric acid levels shot up even further. In all, just with single meals, they were able to trigger gout attacks in six out of the seven patients. Now, some meat has less purines than others, 
Superworms have particularly low purine levels. Super because they're like two to three inches long. Not all animal foods increase gout risk, though low-fat dairy products were found to be protective. If that's the case, we would predict vegans could, would be at a disadvantage, which, which is indeed what was found, uh, though these were all within the normal range, which is uh, like uh, 3.5 to 7. Should gout patients add milk to their diets? Well, although drinking the equivalent of 10 cups of skin milk at a time appears to have an acute lowering effect on uric acid levels, in the long term, over months, at the equivalent of 2 cups a day, uh, there was not a statistically significant lowering effect. Uh, they gave skim milk powder to gout patients for three months, and it did not appear to help. Uh, though soy milk has also been associated with a lower risk of uh, uric acid buildup, there are no interventional trials to back that up. The bottom line is that we now have good research on how to reduce the risk of gout without the use of drug treatments through modification of diet. That's important because allopurinol is the drug of choice. It's considered generally safe, but what does it mean when doctors talk about a relatively safe drug? Well, about 2% of patients develop hypersensitivity reactions, which can sometimes be severe, and fatal, with a mortality rate of up to 20%. And that's the safe drug. The other leading drug, colchicine, has no clear-cut distinction between the non-toxic, toxic, and lethal dose.